I know you all know the story of Noah's Ark. It's from the book of Genesis. It goes like this. The earth is about to be engulfed by a flood, and Noah saves all the animals by ushering them onto his ark. Two by two, every living thing. One male, one female. Well, photographer Joel Sartori could be called a modern-day Noah instead of a boat, though he has his camera. And for the past decade, he's been traveling the world, photographing the most endangered animals on the planet. The photos are included in National Geographic's upcoming special issue on extinction. And in the book, the photo arc vanishing, the world's most vulnerable animals. Joel Sartori joins me via Skype. He's in Lincoln, Nebraska today. Thank you for joining me. 10,000 photos that you've captured, 10,000 different endangered animals. Was the goal, Joel, to keep a version like an archive, or was the goal to sort of push people to care before it's too late? There you go, it's both actually. Um, it is the world's largest archive of biodiversity. We photograph rare or common animals at this point because we don't know what's gonna go away on us in the next 25, 50, 100 years. But it really, more than just being uh, a giant obituary, it's meant to inspire people to care and to lessen the extinction crisis that's coming up. What makes the public care? What is the thing that helps somebody uh, to really care about an animal that maybe they'll never even have a chance to see in a zoo or in their community? Right. Well, we won't love it if we never even met it. So the photo arc is a giant dating service, I guess, between biodiversity and the public. We're mammals ourselves. We're primates. We, we love eye contact, and so, so we want them to get a good look at them in proper lighting on black and white backgrounds. There's no distractions. We can see that there's great intelligence and power in all of them, and I believe they have a basic right to exist. I want to walk through a couple. I know you said they're your favorite, but I, I think probably you have 10,000 favorites. Uh, the first is the baby uh, pangolin. Tell me about that. Right. So in, it's an effort to get every captive species on the planet. And this pangolin was pretty significant in that it's an animal that is really getting closer and closer to extinction every year. They're, they're, they're easy to hunt. Uh, they hunt them with dogs at night. They're easy to just put, pick up and put up in a gunny sack. And this is a mom uh, carrying her baby around on her tail at a captive breeding facility in Florida. But this is an animal that is heavily used in uh, Chinese medicine for meat and for scales. And if we don't stop and pay attention, we're liable to lose it. The mandrill is looking at itself in your lens and has his hands over his mouth. That's right. This was at a bushmeat market in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, the animal's chained to an old rusty car and liable to be made into stew that night. And so we brought Black Velvet along and made him immortal. He's probably seeing himself for the very first time in the reflection of my lens filter. So that's oh, what you're Such a beautiful, beautiful there. photo. You're now well into your second decade of this project with heading to 10,000 animals um, photographed. When do you think you'll be done? What, when does the project end? Well, um, there are between 12 and 15,000 species in human care globally. We're nearing 10,000 after 13 years, I think it is. So another 10 years, we have to go farther to get fewer, but to get those last two to 5,000, we'll have to be gone from home another 10, 15 years, I think. And then that'll be about it, I hope. The, the book is beautiful. It's called The Photo Arc, Vanishing, the World's Most Vulnerable Animals. And go to natgeo.com and take that Save Together pledge. Thank you, Joel, appreciate it. Thank you.